Hey everyone, Future Mark here, and I'm just telling you that Past Mark is going to be doing a review of Loopers. So uh, stay tuned because you'll see that coming now. He doesn't know he's doing it yet, but I know he's doing it yet. So check it out. Looper review coming up next. Ah, uh, oh, crap. Hey everyone, Mark the Movie Man here. Welcome to the final cut. Yes, today we're going to take a look at Looper, the time travel sci-fi film brought to us by Rian Johnson, who wrote and directed the film. He also did Brick, which had Gor Joseph Gordon-Levitt in it. Coincidentally, so does Looper. Looper uh, takes place in the future, and in 2072 or 74, wherever it was, anyway, in the far future, uh, time travel was discovered and immediately outlawed. So it's only taken over by the gangsters of the future, the organized crime families, if you will, and the black market. Well, when they want to off someone, they stick someone uh, and send them back 30 years to get killed by a Looper who's waiting to shoot the person. Well, Joe, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, is a very good looper, and he does his job well. And he doesn't, you know, his life's going really good. He's got his money, he's building up money to get out of the life until he comes across himself. And when he doesn't shoot himself, his self escapes, his future self, and that's played by uh, Bruce Willis. And we end up seeing the events unfold as why his future self has come back. And we see how he tries to handle dealing with going after to basically eliminate himself. While he's got the organized crime family headed by Abe, played beautifully by Jeff Daniels, is chasing him down for failing to kill his mark. Folks, this script was brilliant. Sci-fi time travel is always hard to get across, usually one, for suspension of disbelief, and two, keep it from getting too confusing. And Rian Johnson manages that beautifully with this script. They lay out everything exactly why things are. Just when you start to question, well, why couldn't they have done this? Boom, he fills in that plot hole. I mean, it, this is a very tight, brilliantly written science fiction script, which surprised me as much as it did. I didn't think it would be this tightly wound. I mean, um... By the end of the first act there, you buy into this world. You, I mean, the technology and everything, too. They don't go over sci-fi. It's kind of more reality, you know, grounded sci-fi. So there's some electric conversion kits on cars, and uh, you see some, uh, you know, more futuristic vehicles, but not much. Devices look like they would have progressed that far into the future from where they are now. I mean, it was really the world they built around this uh, uh, story was fantastic and it helped uh, ground it and make you buy into it so by the you know not even a third of the way through the film you've stopped really questioning why because they've really set it up and explained it it's amazing they put it on level on terms enough so you can understand it buy into it go yeah okay we'll go with that and when you do oh just everything about this film was really well done. It's great to see good sci-fi. You know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's fantastic anyway, and in this role in Joe, he owns it. And they gave him makeup so he looks like a young Bruce Willis on his nose. They made mostly in his nose and that, so he's a little hard to recognize. But he's got all the nuances and everything that Bruce Willis does, from the eye twitch to the way he walks. He really sells the fact that he is the younger version of Bruce Willis. So when Bruce Willis shows up, you go... Wow, they are the younger and older version. You know, I mean, they play off each other so well. As you can tell, I've really enjoyed this movie. It's refreshing to see good sci-fi, good original sci-fi, and this is it. And it was a time travel movie that was not confusing to anyone. They explain it beautifully of how things are, and so you buy into it. You, this, you know, that's a big thing for sci-fi. You gotta buy into the world, and once you do, things really start to click. And then let me tell you, this script really clicks, okay? And just when you think the time travel part is the main focus, it's not. This script definitely leads you in one direction and then it goes in another direction in a good way to the, by the time you get to near the end you're like wow we went here i didn't expect that look also for a later halfway through the film for pierce gannon this little kid you're gonna love him okay 
brilliant actor held his own with scenes with Joseph Gordon-Levitt in it. And just, you'll love his character. And, uh, you know, his character is one of those characters that you didn't see coming. And it, he did it great. Oh, I loved, I lo just loved the dialogue and the script they had in this. Jeff Daniels playing Abe, the big organized crime boss guy who's in charge of this city and basically letting it go to hell you know it's yeah prostitution and drugs and everything and and we our hero is flawed joseph gordon levitt's joe is a flawed character he has his own vices okay which uh we see him battle while he's battling trying to go after his old self played brilliantly by bruce willis and yes, folks, as you can guess, this is a five stubber, okay? It's a tightly, well organized, well explained science fiction time travel film that's a refreshing change from all the rehash we've gotten in remakes and sequels. It is original. Just when you've lost hope in some science fiction movies, you've got this. It's not a comic book uh, uh, film, it's not a superhero film. This is just a good action sci-fi film with great drama elements put in and definitely worth your time and money folks five stubs from the movie man go see looper you will not be disappointed and that'll about do it for us here at the final cut till next time keep that ticket stuff